Hello everyone. In this clip I'm going to show you another example of computer assisted structure elucidation by NMR. On this occasion I'm going to use a relatively complex molecule such as Uimbine. Double click on the MNOVA document in the data browser. We get a 1D proton and carbon spectra HSQC as well as COSY and HMBC 2D spectra. Click on the Start Structure Elucidation button and follow the instructions displayed on the Elucidation data panel to guide the spectral analysis in the structure generation. Use the Click to enter the molecular formula button and type the molecular formula C21H26N2O3. All the individual atoms are displayed on the molecular connectivity diagram, the MCD. A starting point with the warning message in orange, 21 carbon atoms not found in NMR data. On the workflow panel, click on the carbon 13 auto peak picking. It is very important to make sure that peaks are properly picked, otherwise we have problems in the subsequent steps. Make sure there are no artifacts, no impurity peaks, and peaks have been picked correctly. On the MCD panel we see that we've got 21 carbons and 13 peaks picked and we can see them now in green with their chemical shifts. Next we analyze the proton spectra. To do this we can either go to analysis and select the automatic analysis tool or use the structure elucidation workflow and select the 1H auto multiplet analysis. All proton multiplets are now analysed and integrals normalised. Integral values will be very important for the elucidation to know the number of atoms corresponding to each signal. It is important to examine the peak picking and multiplet analysis results. Now, we can see some peaks overlapped at around 3 ppm for 2 or 3 protons and also at around 2 ppm we can see a signal with about 3 or 4 peaks. Checking more closely, the area around 1.6 ppm we can see how the tallest peak has been assigned as a water peak, but that's not right. We can check on the HSQC that we have a correlation so the whole signal should be integrated by three protons. We can easily edit this as compound peak and not as solvent in the peaks table and make the integral value equal to three. To do this we just delete one of the multiplets and expand the region to cover all of it. The multiplet label says doublet of triplets which does not seem reasonable, so I can change this by editing the multiplet box and edit it to M of multiplet. Back to the HSQC, we see how we have an edited HSQC which conveniently shows in different colours how many protons are attached to each carbon. We can turn on useful pig picking hint lines to display the grid and easily see the correlations. Next step in the elucidation workflow is to select HSQC Start Peak Picking. The cursor automatically changes to Peak by Peak mode. We can start doing peak picking on the spectrum. Similarly, we can do the same for other regions of the spectrum. The peak at about 52 ppm has been assigned as a CH3 group in the MCD panel. We can verify this by checking the integral in the 1D proton spectrum and we can see that the methyl group at about 3.8 ppm. We can review them all and if we find that any of these peaks is not well assigned we can always edit it using the constraints table. So let's carry out peak by peak picking on the HSQC to get them assigned properly. we see some more overlap protons. We can remove the integral on the 1D proton spectrum doing mouse right click and select delete multiplet. 
Then back to the HSQC. Refresh the peak picking hint lines and do a manual peak by peak analysis as before. We can zoom in now on the problematic correlation. We can click in the centre of the correlation at 61.9 ppm. Zooming into a different region, we see some more overlap protons. We can remove the integral on the 1D proton spectrum doing mouse right click and select delete multiplet. Then back to the HSQC. Refresh the peak picking hint lines and do a manual peak by peak analysis as before. We can assign in a very similar way the other multiplet at 1.6 ppm, mouse right click and select delete multiplet and keep doing peak picking to the remaining peaks. We can tidy up the assigned groups on the MCD panel. We can continue with the peak picking for other correlations. Once correlations are picked we can see how the MCD diagram says that we have 21 carbon atoms and 24 protons. It is also indicating that MNOVA is not sure if two atom groups or two HSQC peaks are CHs or a CH3. So we can go to the elucidation constraints table. We see the rows highlighted in yellow signifying that there is no conclusion from automatic analysis for these groups and we have to resolve these manually. From the integral value for this group, which is around 3, we can see that this cannot be a CH3 group, so we can edit the constraints table ticking the CH checkbox for row. In this way, row 15 turns green. We can do the same for row 16 with chemical shift around 2.05 ppm. From the integral value, we can see it can only be a CH group, so we can edit it in the same way as we did for row 15. Back to the MCD diagram, we can see there are no ambiguities or messages in terms of proton assignments from the HSQC information. We have two nitrogen, three oxygen atoms and two protons not assigned to any of those correlations. Looking at the full HSQC spectra, there is one extra proton peak without any HSQC correlation, meaning that we have an exchangeable proton, an NH group looking at the chemical shift. Checking the correlations on the HMBC spectra for this proton, we can see several CH correlations for it. Since we don't have a nitrogen HSQC spectra, we can manually edit the elucidation constraints table and in the spectral data menu, select Add 2D Spectrum and define the spectrum parameter options as Nitrogen to Proton HSQC Spectrum. Let's get back to the user defined Nitrogen Proton HSQC Spectrum and click Add Peak. Fill in the parameters 100 ppm for the Nitrogen in F1 and 7.78 ppm for the Proton in F2 and select 1 for distance in bonds. The elucidation constraint table shows the row in green for this proton. We can tick the box corresponding to the group with one proton. To avoid confusion, it is important to delete this multiplet at 7.78 ppm from the 1D spectrum. Otherwise, we may obtain two chemical shifts for this group on the HSQC and HMBC spectra, which can cause problems with the structures generation. Now we can see only one chemical shift coming from the elucidation constraint table that we've entered. This chemical shift is a little bit out of alignment so that we can fix it. We may need to increase the number of decimal places for it to fit properly. To do this, just double click on the spectral window, go to Peaks and type the number of decimal places we wish. In this case I'm going to increase to three decimal places. With the crosshair 
we can now check the exact chemical shift which is 7.785 ppm and go to the spectral data in the elucidation constraints panel. Double click anywhere on the green row. Now we can retype the exact chemical shift on the 2D NMR peak window. Going back to the HMBC spectra and refreshing the peak picking hint lines we can see how the lines are right in the middle of the peak. Moving on we can analyze the HMBC spectra. Starting by the aromatic region we can start doing peak picking on the strong correlations and see the details for each correlation on the constraint table. MNOVA structure elucidation currently only uses the information for 2J and 3J correlations. Long range correlations will be included in this module very soon. For the time being it's important not to include any long range correlations that's 4J or higher for the elucidation process. We double click on any row and edit the information including the distance column. Be aware that if we edit for instance to two or four bonds then this connectivity will not be used by the elucidation process. We can carry on doing peak picking on the spectra. Moving on to another region, we can commence peak picking with confidence on several correlations. Be aware that correlations where we don't have the certainty such as some of the weak ones around 108 ppm shouldn't be picked at least at this stage. Some of the correlations around 126 ppm are also weak but looking into it more closely perhaps we could pick this correlation too. We can see on the MCD panel that some more green arrows have been drawn to indicate the new atom correlations. We can check other regions and keep analysing the spectra. We can zoom in the most complex regions and decide which correlations to be picked making sure that the right carbon chemical shift has been selected. As before any weak correlations or ones that we're not too sure can be omitted. We can select more correlations in another region of the spectra. We have to be careful with the group of protons around 2.02 ppm. Double checking the correlations on the HSQC spectra we can see how these groups can be problematic at least two of the protons are totally overlapped. In this case better to ignore all correlations for these groups of protons on the HMBC spectra. There is a final region in the spectra where we can see again a problematic group of protons. We can do peak picking in some of the correlations here with some confidence. We can see some more CH groups interconnected on the MCD panel also including NH we manually defined earlier connected to some of the carbon atoms. We can now switch to the cosy spectra. Starting with the aromatic region we can pick some of the cross peaks. Direct connectivities are displayed as blue arrows on the MCD panel. We don't need to pick symmetrical correlations on both sides of the diagonal but it's okay if any of them are picked. Let's do the same for the other region. 
and pick the correlations we're sure about. For this particular correlation, we can see on the MCD that we got two dashed blue arrows instead of one from this CH, which corresponds to this chemical shift to two other CH2 groups. This is because there is some peak overlapping from the protons at 2.02 ppm. MNOVA is telling us we cannot draw an ambiguous conclusion, so we can just delete this correlation to avoid confusion. And similarly for the other group at 1.58 ppm. Zoom out to see the whole region and pick some more correlations. Let's take another good look at the spectra. Getting any of the correlations wrong could mean not finding the correct structure. However, if we don't select enough correlations, the search time to find the structure increases considerably. It's a matter of finding the right balance. We can select this extra correlation on the HMBC spectra in the intersection between these two correlations. Looking at the MCD, we see an ambiguity between a CH or a CH3 that we have to resolve manually. For this, just go to Select Show Elucidation Constraints. The yellow row displays the ambiguity. Following the chemical shift, we select the HSQC spectra to see that we have only one proton. We can select the right box and now we're ready to click on the structure generation. After about 40 minutes the structure elucidation was completed. On the best generated panel we can see the structure obtained, the correct one, and the blue curves showing the carbon-carbon one bond connectivities from the COSY spectra also, the green arrows are curves 1 or 2 bond connectivities from the HMBC spectra. If we highlight any of them, we will see them display on the actual spectra. On this occasion, the structure generation took a long time because we did not select all possible correlations on the HMBC spectra to avoid a mistake. We hope you've seen the potential of MNOVA structure elucidation and how important the way we select correlations is. Please go to the Mestralab webpage and sign up for a free 45 day trial or contact us at info at mestralab.com if you prefer to discuss your needs or request this data set for testing purposes.